educator at Mohai, and this is IDLab at Home. Join us as we tinker, experiment, and create our way through history with rotating topics and activities. Today, we're going to be exploring local innovations in the arts. Cornish College of the Arts is a performing and visual arts school here in Seattle, not too far from Mohai. It was founded in 1914 by Nellie Cornish, who is a pianist and music teacher, and it started as the Cornish School of Music, which offered classes to young children. The school quickly expanded within the first few years to teach a wide range of ages and offer classes in painting, dance, theater, eurythmics, and French language. Cornish hired famous and lesser known artists to teach, many who created groundbreaking works that influenced the arts across the United States, and the school quickly became known as a center for innovation in music and dance. This was not only because of the individual talents, but also because of collaborations between students and staff across a variety of artistic disciplines. Students and faculty would frequently perform, choreograph, compose, and design sets and costumes for each other. In the 1930s, one such collaboration led to an exciting innovation in music and sound. John Cage, a pianist and composer, was already interested in experimenting with percussion instruments when he began teaching at Cornish. At the time, he was building a collection of instruments that combined more traditional percussion instruments with found objects and noisemakers. At the same time, Sevilla Fort was a student in Cornish's modern dance program. At this time, choreographers and dancers were exploring what dance could look like outside the rules and language of ballet, with movements that were more natural and abstract. In 1930, Fort choreographed a dance piece and asked Cage to compose for her. She wanted music that would evoke different sounds and rhythms of Africa. At first, Cage tried to experiment with all the different percussion instruments that he had collected, but realized that because of the size of the stage that the performance would be taking place on, that he wouldn't be able to fit all of that, but he could fit one grand piano. So he decided to experiment with making new sounds by altering the piano by placing materials and objects like bolts and screws and strips of leather in between the piano strings to make sounds like plinks and plunks and thuds that would mix in with the normal piano sounds. The piece was praised for its unusual combination of movement and sound, and the prepared piano became a feature of Cage's work in the years to come. Cage continued to experiment through his collaboration with dancers, most notably his lifelong romantic and creative partner, Merce Cunningham. Together, they explored intentionality and chance in rhythm and movement. Fort continued to explore Afro-modern dance and went on to teach in New York with Catherine Dunham, who had developed her own style of modern dance that incorporated movements from South America, Africa, and the Caribbean. After the Dunham School closed, Fort opened her own dance studio and taught classes to aspiring actors. Let's experiment with music and movement by building a kinetic sculpture. A kinetic sculpture is a 3D work of art that incorporates movement. Wawona by John Grade here at Mohai gently sways like a ship when you push on it. Hammering Man by Jonathan Borofsky uses an electric motor to endlessly move the worker's hammer up and down. The giant pipes in A Sound Garden by Douglas Hollis make organ-like sounds when the wind blows. We're gonna make a kinetic sculpture inspired by music. First step is to pick a piece of music to listen to as your inspiration. As you listen, try to visualize the movement of the song by drawing or dancing. How do you feel when you listen to this music? What kinds of motion are your pencil or body making? What shapes or lines are you making? What kinds of images do you see or think of? And what colors do you imagine? Build a kinetic sculpture inspired by the music. Go on a materials treasure hunt around your home. But first, establish some ground rules with your grown-ups, like what spaces can be used and explored and what kinds of materials you are allowed to collect. You're gonna wanna look for tools you can use, things you can draw on, cut, or rip, fasteners like string or these binder clips, and other bits and bobbles. 
there are lots of ways you can incorporate movement into a sculpture. If you're looking for bounce, you could do something like a paper accordion fold or look for an object that naturally has a spring to it. If you're looking for a rotating motion, you could again look for an object that spins or you could make an object that rotates by attaching something round to a handle. You can also float objects by hanging them from one another. And you can play with joints and hinges like with this clothespin or by creating a lever. Play with different materials to see what effects you can make. You may find that you need to go on another materials hunt. I decided to make my sculpture inspired by Rhapsody in Blue, composed by George Gershwin. This is my kinetic sculpture. Rhapsody in Blue really inspired me to make a mobile, so a hanging, balancing sculpture, because I really wanted to get that sense of swaying with the music, but the music also has a lot of bounces to it, and I was also spinning around and drawing a lot of spirals on my paper, so I wanted to capture all of those movements, both physically and visually. So I've got a little bounce here with the Easter egg, but also the kind of bounce of the zigzag paper, and this curly cue here, but also the spinner. And it's Rhapsody in Blue, so I chose to use a lot of blue colors, um, but the music also really makes me think of city buildings glittering in the sun, so I tried to use a lot of sparkles. And I also at one point was thinking of a sunset, so I kind of added this gold color up here. And it kind of gently sways, but you can also make it move in certain ways as well. And that's my sculpture. You can locate the activity instructions below or on our website at mohai.org education. You can also explore the history of local art with our online collection at mohai.org collections. Thanks for watching.